Hey everyone, welcome back. First, I want to say thank you to everyone who viewed, liked, and commented on my first video. I was not expecting to get the responses that I did, but I was so happy to hear about your guys' perspective of the Lexus IS and also answer questions that you had. In this video, I want to take it a step further to give you the complete process of what happens when you return a lease vehicle down to the final bill. I apologize it took so long to get this video up, but it's here now, so let's get started. If you remember from my last video, my intentions were to return my Lexus and not lease a new vehicle, and that's exactly what happened. Prior to me returning the vehicle, I called Lexus Financial, and I said, hey, I'm over my mileage, I know I'm gonna get a bill, do I have to pay the bill immediately? This balance due, can I roll into another vehicle? Can I roll into another vehicle that's not a Lexus? Um, I talked to several people and pretty much got nowhere. Everyone pretty much said that, oh, we'll take care of it when it happens or when you get the bill, call us and we'll work something out. Um, why is this? The reason is, is because with Lexus Financial is the people that take your payments are not the same people that handle your final bill when your lease is over. That's done through the lease end department. So I called them. They pretty much couldn't help me either, but they did tell me to call back within 30 days of my maturity date to schedule the free inspection. Um, your maturity date is the date that your lease is over. So if you have a one year lease and you leased your car on January 1st, your lease maturity date will be January 1st of the following year. So 30 days before my maturity date, I called Lexus Financial to schedule my free inspection. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly 30 days before you return the vehicle, but it has to be at least two weeks. Lexus Financial contracts all of their inspections out to a company called AutoVin. AutoVin is an inspection company that handles also insurance claims for boats, cars, and motorcycles. Now, the inspection. Very easy, very quick. Mine took no more than 15 minutes and you don't need to move your vehicle. The inspector is gonna come in, turn on your vehicle, and leave it running for the duration of the test. They're gonna test things like your power windows, power locks, your AC, the heat. Um, they're also gonna be looking for small dents and chips and things like that. One thing they're gonna pay close attention to is the tread life remaining on each tire, wanting to know whether or not you have enough to return the vehicle on. Immediately after the inspection is completed, AutoVin will email you a copy of the inspection. If you're paying for an additional protection plan to cover wear, tear, and damage on the vehicle, the report will indicate what AutoVen believes will be covered and what they believe will not be covered. This will give you an opportunity to get things replaced or repaired on the vehicle before you return it to the dealer and it ends up costing you more. In about two weeks, you're going to receive a hard copy of the inspection in the mail. A copy of this inspection also goes to your financial institution, in this case, Toyota Lexus Financial. A copy does not go to your dealer where you bought the car. This is important because if you see something on your inspection that you don't like, you can't argue it with your dealer. You have to go directly to the financial institution. AutoVin also gives the option for a copy of the inspection to be sent to your dealership. I didn't opt for this and I don't advise you guys to do it either. You don't want to give the dealership any advantages. Um, for example, if you're dead set on leaving the brand, you don't want to walk into the dealership and then say, oh, okay, well, you're fine, but you owe us $300 for this ashtray because it's hard to find. Not saying that it would happen, but you don't want to give them any advantages. The advantage to you having the inspection and not the dealership is that you can use the items that you are over on, any excess mileage or any uh, additional fees, use that to your advantage to negotiate for the new vehicle. For example, yes, I owe you know, $3,000 in overages of miles. Well, you can forgive this and I'll get a new vehicle, or if you're a lot over, perhaps roll some of that um, cost into the price of the new vehicle. At the end of my lease, I knew I was gonna get charged for excess miles. I already did the calculations, no surprise there. I also needed tires, and a lot of people need tires when they return their vehicle and they go out and buy brand new tires. Don't do that. The first thing you need to do is call your lease-in department. Find out what the minimum acceptable tread life is on your tire to return the vehicle. A lot of you may need new tires, but some of you may not. However, if you think you do, you probably do. <laughs> so, buy used tires. Don't buy brand new tires for a vehicle you're about to return. The next thing you need to ask your lease-in department is whether or not those tires have to be the same brand and or model. For example, you've got Goodyear summer in the front and Goodyear winter in the back. Is that okay? Or do they only care that the tires have enough tread life? 
So then theoretically you could have a Pirelli on this corner, a BF Goodrich on this corner, Firestone on this corner, and Goodyear on that corner. Is that okay? You need to know this because it's very challenging to find used tires that are the same size, brand, and model that you need to return the vehicle on. If you can mix and match, you're gonna come out so much better. Of course, I don't know the requirements for every leasing company, but if you're looking at Lexus, they only require the tires to be the same brand. So I return the vehicle with used Pirelli touring tires in the front and used Pirelli sport tires in the back and was totally fine. All right, returning the vehicle, very easy. I know a lot of dealers will use this as that last ditch effort to try to sell you another car. However, my dealer knew I was leaving the brand, so I was in and out in 15 minutes. For Lexus, the process is very easy. It's a one-page checklist saying that you have the manual, both sets of keys, the spare tire, and the cargo cover if you have an SUV. You sign, and that's it. Um, yeah, it was a more emotional day than I thought. I walked out of the dealership and I saw one last look at my car and um, yeah, I almost cried. It was in the corner of my eye, but it didn't it didn't fall, so it doesn't count. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a, definitely a sad day. This document is a invoice detailing everything that the leasing company is charging you for now that you've returned the vehicle. Okay, we're gonna quickly go line by line so you guys can understand which each charge is for. Uh, first off is the unpaid lease payments. So for example, if you have a $500 a month lease and you return the vehicle without paying that last payment, that $500 will show up here on your unpaid lease payments. Next up are the unpaid late charges. Now, like I've said, I don't know the requirements for every leasing company, so what I'm about to say applies only to Lexus Financial. Lexus Financial places a $30 late payment charge on your account every time you make your car payment 10 days after it's due. Now, this $30 does not get added to your principal or to your car payment. It goes in a separate account. It's not taxed, it doesn't accrue interest, and it doesn't affect your credit. So, for example, you have a $500 car payment that's due on the 1st, but you don't get paid until the 15th. Well, knowing what you know now about the late charges, go ahead and take that $30 charge. Keep that $500 in your pocket until you get paid again. What will happen when you make your payment is they'll say, hey, you have a $500 car payment and $30 in late charges. Do you want to pay the late charges now? You don't have to. For sure, pay your car payment. But in fact, you can keep accruing $30 late payments until you the lease is over. Those unpaid late charges will show up here. Where this could also hurt you is that if you have unpaid late payment charges on your account from the past and you wanna set up a payment arrangement for this month, well, Lexus won't allow you to set up any type of payment arrangement if the entire account that is your car payment and the late payments are not brought to current. Next are the unpaid miscellaneous receivables. I don't know what that is and nothing was charged. Next is the excessive wear and use, nothing charged there, mostly because I take care of my vehicle, but also because of the next line item, the EWU protection plan coverage. The EWU is a protection plan that's sold through your dealership's finance department. It's not a requirement to lease or finance a vehicle. Its purpose is to cover the things that you would otherwise be charged for when you return the vehicle. Things like road debris, chips in the paints, minor scratches, small dents in your vehicle, things like that. For $40 a month, Lexus will sell you a wheel and tire protection plan. This covers any damage to your wheel, such as bending, and will also allow you to return the vehicle on practically bald tires. Now, a quick calculation, $40 a month times 27 months I had the vehicle comes out to $1,080. And I know that anyone can return their vehicle with acceptable tires for less than $1,000. So unless you're off-road racing, you might want to skip this option. Also, don't be afraid if you return the vehicle with scratches from curbing your wheels. I did the same thing, and I wasn't charged. The next thing on the list is the one that everyone's familiar with and everyone knows how to calculate. This is the excessive mileage charge. But what you may not know is that the total charge is taxable and that tax is based on where you bought the vehicle. So for my $1,764.75, I will be paying an additional 7% in sales tax. The last thing on the list is the disposition fee. This is also a taxable charge. 
This fee is what the dealership charges you to return the vehicle. They say it helps with cleaning and for the final paperwork. That's what they say. So my subtotal plus the sales tax gives me a grand total of $2,262.78. Oh, and it looks like they only gave me a month to pay it. When you see this, don't freak out. All you have to do is call your lease in department and put it on a payment plan. Keep this in mind. For Lexus, it doesn't matter if you owe them $500 or $10,000. The longest payment plan that they have is 12 months. Hey guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Look, I know there's a lot of information out there on leasing cars, some good, some bad, and some downright confusing. Um, the information I was able to provide you would have been almost impossible for me to pr obtain without actually living the experience. It's been my pleasure to give you guys this information. And I know after seeing my final bill, a lot of you are wondering, was it worth it for me to lease this vehicle? I'm going to release a new video for you guys showing you the difference between leasing a car and financing a car from a numbers perspective. Um, but to give you the answer, yes, it was worth it for me to lease this vehicle. Um, I know it's been a long time since my last post, which I posted really with the belief that people wanted to see an honest and different approach to a car review. Um, the responses I got were fantastic. So I just want to say thank you to uh, Andres Herrera, Edgar Ponce, um, Rice Cooker, Invisible Ninja, Aaron Dragunov, uh, Michael Adler, and Curls Divine, Jasmine. Thank you all for your support, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.